What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to another topical video here on Anfield Agenda. I hope you're surviving the international break. I am not a big fan of international football so I try where possible to book my family holidays during the international breaks and that's right where I am when you're watching this. I am currently away with the family for a week so I didn't want to leave you guys high and dry so I've recorded a series of videos all of them topical that you can hopefully watch at your leisure and of course give us your opinions on. Today, today we're going to be looking at the importance of a sporting director in a modern club and particularly a good sporting director. Uh, credit to Davino for this idea by the way from our Discord group. Thank you my friend, it's a belter. And as Liverpool fans, look, we've been blessed. Michael Edwards is probably the standard bearer for modern sporting directors. But, of course, we want to know your thoughts. So, as I mentioned, do let us know in the comment section. If you haven't dropped a like on the video, don't forget to do it. And, of course, hit the subscribe button. So, what is the job of a sporting director? Well, the brief varies from club to club. And, basically, it's to keep the fo footballing philosophy the same all the way through from the underage teams to the first team to make sure that there is this potential... Uh, conveyor belt of talent through all playing in the style that the football club want to play so let's say at Ajax a sporting director would make sure to bring in good quality technical young players that can hopefully make their way through to the first team and high quality first team players that suit the philosophy of the way the club wants to play football this can be a little bit more tricky if you have uh, somebody like, let's say, Jurgen Klopp at the club uh, because you have trust in him as well. So, you know, Klopp will have his own philosophy, Pep Guardiola, Manchester City, before him, Sir Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger. But those days of those long-lasting managers are probably limited and we're very fortunate at Liverpool to have had Klopp and his vision, of course, has been set out by the club. But if you're a club like Spurs, Chelsea... Real Madrid and as an example often at times you're going to chop and change managers but you want consistency throughout the club consistency in the style of football and the type of players brought in and a sporting director is part of this process he will also of course negotiate a lot of the times players contracts both for extensions and renewals and of course to bring in new talent now I guess one of the best examples of why a good sporting director can be worth their weight in gold a good example of this is, of course, with at Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp, as we know, wanted Julian Brandt. Julian Brandt is a very good footballer, but um, our sporting team, our Michael Edwards, his statisticians and the scouts were really, really pushing this fella. You may have heard of him by the name of Mohamed Salah. And Jurgen Klopp really wanted Brandt, but the recruitment team kept pushing and pushing and saying, this is the guy, this is the guy. Listen to us, Jürgen, this is the guy. And of course, Jürgen, trusting the people around him, listened to them, brought in Mohamed Salah, and well, the rest is history. On top of this, we've had some other exceptional work done by sporting directors like moving Kevin Stewart onto Hull and for the same money, bringing in a certain left back called Andrew Robertson for about eight and a half million quid. So sporting directors don't just have to go out there and bring in the best talent in the world. Sometimes there are on un, un, unpolished diamonds or diamonds in the rough out there as well and sporting directors going wrong are more more plentiful i would suggest than sporting directors doing right for example if i look at manchester united i see a club with undoubted potential a huge fan base lots of money but no stability of decision making throughout the club because it needs to run from top to bottom and it needs to be in the entire way through the structure so Michael Edwards would have been exactly what Manchester United need as an example right now. And they've had their own directors of football in. Some of them worked, some of them haven't worked, some of them have varying degrees of success. But ultimately, they haven't found that consistency. Liverpool, of course, since we've missed Julian Ward, or excuse me, since we've lost Michael Edwards, have had Julian Ward come in. Julian Ward didn't really last all that long. He moved on, and now we had George Schmatke to help out through the summer transfer window. George Schmatke, it's fair to say, got some stuff done, but was never really going to be a long-term successor to Julian Ward at the club. So in modern football, it's far more likely that you will see clubs have a sporting director in place than not. Back in the old days where managers stuck around for longer and you had the Arsene Wengers, the Sir Alex Fergusons, the trust was put in them. But these days, a modern manager has a lot to be getting on with. And yes, top managers will, of course, still have their own list of players or targets they'd like to bring in. But they work as part of a team. And a sporting director is somebody who bridges the gap between the ownership group, 
and of course the coaching and playing staff and Jurgen Klopp had a tremendous working relationship with Michael Edwards I mean it's the stuff of legend at this point and I'm sure there are many other great sporting directors at other clubs that have done great work Monchi as an example at Sevilla was probably the first real superstar sporting director that many of us heard about some of the the transfers he got over the line at Sevilla over the years turned out to be unbelievable and the money Sevilla made then from selling on those players was it was pretty pretty awesome to be fair so Monchi yes very prominent Chitiki uh Tiki Geberstein, or excuse me for my pronunciation, the gentleman from Manchester City that used to be at Barcelona, Tiki Begerestein, I think that's how you pronounce it, another one that has a very good calibre, very good connections and a very good scouting network as well. So if you're an owner of a football club and you want to make sure that you have um, your vision implemented throughout the club and trust, you need to have a sporting director that you know that you can leave in charge to get the job done and have your footballing philosophy played out throughout the club. Now, there are going to be other things that sporting directors do, of course, and as I mentioned, the brief does, does change from club to club. Some clubs still put a lot of scope in the managerial thought process, like Jurgen Klopp, he's earned the right to make some decisions at Liverpool with regard to the playing staff. But other clubs mainly in Europe I would suggest, particularly in Spain, you'll see the sporting directors making pretty much all the decisions around playing staff and coaches are just that, coaches. The sporting director are the ones who are responsible for bringing players in. A good example, I guess, of how they can go wrong in modern football is the gentleman that's coming to Ajax at the minute. I don't know too much about him other than he's a German dude, used to work at Arsenal, didn't really do too well there and was appointed and given a lot of money to spend at Ajax, only for... He completely went against the grain for the type of player and the philosophy of Ajax. Total football, the Cruyff way. The players he brought in were far removed from that and immediately it left a lot of Ajax fans and media scratching their heads to say, how could this have gone so very wrong? How can the club spend all this money? And how can the club have been in a very healthy position to all of a sudden now being, well, floundering around nowhere near as good as they were and it goes to show you how having a bad sporting director can really really take years and years of good work from football clubs and just flash it down the pan particularly the finances so all in all i would suggest that next to a manager a great top tier sporting director probably maybe even more so than a manager is the number one person that you would want to get right at a football club you guys will probably have some other examples of top tier sporting directors maybe far further afield than uh, the premier league that you would like to throw into suggestions and of course i'd love to see them in the comment section for me i'm just grateful that we did have the time with michael edwards Pretty Julian Ward didn't last around a little bit longer, but I think it's fair to say that at Liverpool, at least, the rebuild so far has been pretty well done. George Schmatka brought us in Dominic Sobitzlai, Endo, so we'll be grateful for that. And of course, got Ryan Grafenberg and Alexis McAllister over the line as well. So that is pretty much it from me. If you have anything you'd love to add around the sporting director role or the importance of it, please do let us know in the comments section. Drop a like on the video. And of course, we'd love you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Talk to you guys soon. Keep an eye out for more videos like this coming up over the coming days. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.